Hello, welcome to the Friday, March 13th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, we got a patch from Microsoft. Microsoft patched CVE 2020-0796. That's the SMB version 3 compression issue just a couple days after it had its official patch Tuesday. So they must have fixed whatever sort of held that patch back on the official patch Tuesday. Given that uh, this is a remote code execution in the server as well as in the client of current versions of Windows 10 and Windows Server, this is something that you should certainly patch. It is theoretically warmable, but it's nothing really to panic about. Now, we do have a blog post uh, that describes the flaw in details. There are proof of concept exploits out there that will cause a blue screen of death, but that's about what we got so far, and it'll probably be a while until there is more. The problem here is a kernel stack overflow, and there are are protections that are sort of built in to Windows 10 and Windows Server in recent versions that make exploitation of these vulnerabilities quite difficult. So why I don't say this will not get exploited, it'll probably be a while until we do see an exploit. So try to get it patched. I would say within the next couple weeks, the sooner the better. There are also a couple scanners out there that you can use uh, to check if you have any vulnerable systems. But essentially, if you have a recent version of Windows 10, Windows Server, yes, you're vulnerable. You should apply the patch. If you don't want to apply the patch right now, then please apply the workaround, which essentially just turns off the compression feature. And I mentioned yesterday that we're looking for a malicious spam malware that takes advantage of the COVID-19 situation. Well, uh, leave it up to Pratt to come up with a nice sample. This particular sample is distributing Hankator. And uh, well, uh, he actually found this uh, via Mesa Matt uh, on Twitter. The email itself claims to be a reminder from your insurance that you apparently purchased COVID-19 insurance. Didn't know something like this actually existed, probably doesn't, and then offers a link to your account invoice. The trick here probably is that, uh, well, if you receive an email like this, uh, you are kind of surprised about it. You suspect some scam, you suspect some fraud. You're clicking on the link. In this case, you will receive a zipped script that if you execute it, will install the Hanktor DLL. Now, Hanky Tor, of course, is nothing new. It will typically then install additional malware. In the past, it has often used these DocuSign style emails to trick users to install it. So what we see here is very typical for sort of the early stages of an event like this, where an attacker just takes existing malware, just rewrites their email template, but does the same thing they have done before. And I mentioned uh, before in this podcast that uh, Tavis Ormandy found an interesting vulnerability in the Avast antivirus engine, and it was essentially the JavaScript interpreter uh, that uh, is included in Avast antivirus, which was in some ways kind of too good. It actually executed code. So... Uh, Avas now responded to this vulnerability that was disclosed here by Tavis and uh, did essentially just remove uh, this component from its product. Kind of a drastic change, but uh, probably the right thing to do here, uh, given that this was a little bit sort of fundamental to how uh, this emulator worked. Uh, it would be sort of uh, probably preferable over just starting to blacklist uh, certain functions, which probably would still be bypassable. And well, you probably heard of Check Rain and the Checkmate boot ROM exploit that they released for a little bit older but fairly recent iOS devices, basically anything running the A9 through A11 chip. 
Now, Apple, of course, is uh, reusing a lot of code between its different products, uh, iOS, Mac OS, TV OS, iPad OS. They all sort of have uh, common roots. And same is also true for some of their secure enclaves. So turns out that apparently uh, the Check Rain team was able to use the Checkmate exploit or a version thereof to actually compromise a MacBook Pro with Touch Bar, gaining access to the Touch Bar and essentially at this point just sort of playing around with it, like displaying, for example, boot messages on the Touch Bar, which in essence is just a second screen. This appears to work with all Macs are compatible with the T1 chip. The T1 chip is the secure enclave. Now, if it's just uh, like uh, the Checkmate exploit for uh, the iOS devices, then this is a hardware problem that cannot simply be patched in software. Really have to see where this all uh, goes to the source on Twitter that posted it. I would consider reliable in the sense that uh, they are sort of part of that Czech Rain team or at least the periphery of it. Uh, but of course, at this point, there hasn't really been sort of any sort of independent verification of this. Potentially, this could lead to compromising the T2 secure enclave, which of course sort of uh, would invalidate a lot of the security ecosystem around some of these newer MacBooks. Well, uh, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you on Monday. Bye.